glad you could join me again today. Today I want to talk to you about hats. Might seem like an odd subject, but on my blog and my webpage I've got a little bio that reads this. It says, I wear many hats. Some of them fit well and others I have to keep shoving back into place. But I love my life of variety and challenge. And you know, nothing could be more true. I wear many, many different hats and you probably do too. Some are easy to put on and easy to work with and others not so easy. For example, you're a spouse or a parent or a child, sibling, worker, provider, a host of uh, many things to many different people. And each hat comes with its expectations and its demands. But I don't really think we'd have it any other way. It's part of the joy and the challenge of life, isn't it? It makes us feel needed and gives us a purpose when we have a role to fulfill. And some hats, they change with the seasons. You know, I'm still the mother of five fabulous people, but I no longer have to feed them or fuss with them to get their rooms clean. I'm still a child, but yet both of my parents are gone. So the roles change with the seasons. But I came across a list of hats the other day I had never really thought of. And so maybe I thought today we'd just kind of look at them right quickly. That It's just a, a little list, and then we'll come back to some other ideas. God calls us, it says, to wear the hat of a storyteller. We are to be sharing the gospel stories of him with others. We wear the hat of a trailblazer as we forge by faith into the unknown and follow him uh, wherever that might take us. We have a weaver's hat where, the, where we gather up the, uh, the unraveling and the disconnected lives of those around us and try to point them to hope in Christ. There's the hat of the host welcoming the community and the needy into our homes and into our church. We even wear the hat of a fool, because we're to be fools for Christ's sake, aren't we? Bearing life's absurdities with great grace. And there's the hat of the poet, as we strive to express Christ's love and beauty in, in music and words and actions. And there's a gardener's hat, the hat that we wear as we are sowers and cultivators, uh, nurturers even, of fragile lives. And what about the hat of a, of a conductor as we strive to develop peace and, and fellowship and make beautiful music in the lives of our family? Well, those are just, just a few hats that I came across. But you know, the main thing about the hat is I want to talk about the hat of the child of God. And that's the hat we wear as we know him. This is truly our highest calling, the hat above all others. And it's not just any old hat. It's a crown because we are royal. We are children of the king. The New Testament describes two kinds of crowns. One is the crown of the king worn by a sovereign ruler. Well, we aren't that. At least I'm not. Are you? But Jesus, he is the sovereign ruler. And Revelation 19, 13 tells us he wears many crowns, many crowns upon his head, and they belong to him alone. But there are some other types of New Testament crowns. They're crowns for victors or overcomers. They're worn like a reward, like the, the winner of a race. And they represent the reward that we will be given from Christ. And so I'm just going to quickly go through these five crowns. The Bible talks about the crown of life. And that's given for those who make the necessary sacrifices, even to martyrdom for the Lord. Revelation 2.10 says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. There's an incorruptible crown. It's for those who serve the Lord with temperance and spirit-controlled discipline. And it's described in 2 Corinthians 9.24-26, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, self-controlled. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And there's the crown of rejoicing for those who invest their lives in two things which last forever. One is people, because people are eternal, and the Word of God, because it will stand forever. Investing in people is multiplication. It's seeing people saved and it's making disciples. That's what this crown is for. In 1 Thessalonians 2.19, Paul writes, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at his coming? And then there's the crown of righteousness, given for those who love and look for the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who know that at any moment he would come and they want to stand before him unashamed. They keep their lives pure and ready. 
2 Timothy 4, 8 reads, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Are you ready for that one? I'm ready for that one. And the final crown I want to talk about is the crown of glory. It's given to those who shepherd and oversee people in ministry for pastors and, and leaders, those who feed the flock, who take the oversight willingly and have a ready mind for ministry. First Peter 5, 4 says, and he's speaking to the elders, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, he ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So there's a crown of glory there for the, the, the good servant, the shepherd, the leader of the church. So these five crowns are not something we necessarily wear today. They're things we're trying to obtain. We work to lay ourselves up reward in heaven. That's what these are talking about. So what are we going to do with the hats that we wear today? Let's come back to that idea. And, and here's what I found. My life belongs to the Lord, and yours, if you know him, it belongs to him as well. And he designs and directs our lives so that every hat he gives us has purpose. Nothing is wasted in God's economy. So what am I doing with those hats? Well, I see them as opportunities, opportunities to serve him. And I want to read for you just a few verses, and we'll come back to a conclusion on this. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whether, therefore, ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, whatever hat you're wearing, do all to the glory of God. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says, Whatsoever thy, fi thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Ephesians 6.7 says, With good will, doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men. And I love these verses in Colossians chapter 3. Verse 17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or, dude or deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus, Jesus, giving thanks unto God and the Father by him. And verse 23 and 24 says, And whatsoever you do, whatever hat you're wearing, whatever position God has placed you in, whatever ministry God has given you, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I love that verse. It helps me so often when I get my mind in the wrong place and I get discouraged about the things that are going on or cumbered by the hats I have to wear. I come back and say, you serve the Lord Christ. And that's the key to managing hats. We are serving him in our various roles. Each hat can be fulfilled by doing it in his name being thankful for the opportunity given and doing it with a real heart. Notice the warning. Don't be expecting anything from others. Don't do it as unto men. You, you aren't serving them. It will help you a lot if you will keep your focus on serving Christ and not on serving others in that sense. You are serving him. He is the one that will give you the reward. So keep your eyes on him, your eyes on the goal, and you'll be able to manage every hat he's given you to wear. I'll see you next week.